Continuing in chapter 6, we're going to look at section 6.2, which shows another way of finding volumes. And this method uses the idea of cylindrical shells. So if you can imagine, you've got a three-dimensional mass. And imagine taking round cookie cutters that are concentric circles and just slicing off thin shells. So you'd have a cylinder, um, but it would have a very thin width. That's the idea of this method. Because this method is approaching it from a slightly different angle, it's going to differ from the disc and the washer methods in terms of whether you're integrating with respect to X or Y. With the disc and the washer methods, if your axis of revolution was horizontal, you would integrate with respect to x. With this method, it's just the opposite. If you have a vertical axis of revolution, you're going to be integrating with respect to x because of the way the formula is set up. If you think about a cylinder, And again, imagine you're taking just a really tiny, um, tiny whip here of a cylinder. Imagine those cookie cutters. And let's say you wanted to take it and flatten it out. Well, <clears throat> if you were to flatten it out, you'd make a rectangle. And the length of that rectangle would be the circumference of the circle which is 2 times pi times the radius. And the width of that rectangle would be the height of your cylinder. That is where the formula for the shell um, method comes from. The volume is equal to 2 times pi times the radius times the height. So there is nothing super fancy about where this formula comes from. Again, it's just using that idea of a cylinder. So we're going to look at a couple examples here. In both of these first two examples, we're going to have a vertical axis of revolution. So we're going to be integrating with respect to x. For the first one, we are looking at the region bounded by y equals the square root of x, that's the curve, the line x equals 4, the x-axis. So it's this blue shaded region, and it's going to be revolved about the y-axis. So the volume formula here. We're going to be integrating from x equals 0 to x equals 4. It's 2 pi times the radius times the height. The radius is the distance from the axis of revolution to your x coordinates. Okay, So in this case, it's just going to be the x value. That's your radius. The height is going to be the corresponding y value. Since y equals the square root of x, that's going to be the height, the square root of x. So we can go ahead and integrate this. I'm going to bring the 2 pi in front. x times the square root of x is x to the 3 halves power. When we integrate, we're going to get x to the 5 halves power divided by 5 halves, or 2 fifths x to the 5 halves power. Looking at that from 0 to 4, the square root of 4 is 2. 2 to the 5th power is 32. So I've got 2 fifths times 32 which is 64 fifths. 
And of course, when we plug in zero, we're going to get zero. So we have 2 pi times 64 fifths, which gives us a volume of 128 fifths pi. We're going to look at a second example here. It says find the volume of the solid generated by revolving the shaded region about the indicated axis. So once again, we're revolving it around the y-axis. So we're going to be integrating with respect to x. The interval here goes from 0 to 2. It's 2 pi times the radius times the height. Again, the radius, if we look at a point here, the radius is going to be the distance from the y-axis to that point, and that's just going to be our x value, so it's 2 pi times x. The height is the corresponding y value, which is 1 plus x squared over 4. So if I pull that 2 pi in front, and then I go ahead and distribute the x through those parentheses, I get x plus x cubed over 4 dx. Integrating, I have x squared over 2 plus x to the 4th over 4 times 4, which is x to the 4th over 16. And we're going to look at that on the interval from 0 to 2. So I start by plugging in a 2 for x. 2 squared is 4. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 2 to the 4th is 16. 16 divided by itself is 1. And then I would subtract off what I would get from plugging in the 0 for x, and that's just going to be a 0, so it doesn't impact anything. So we have 2 pi times 2 plus 1, so 2 pi times 3 is 6 pi, and that's the volume here.